This is the art of low riding. A true automotive enthusiast has a passion for their dream car and strives to create their own vision of what that car should be. With each vehicle owner being the artist and their car is a canvas, creating automotive art and their dream art. On this episode, we'll be visiting Anaheim, California, home of AutoFest, and talking to Sam, owner of a beautifully restored 1941 Chevy Deluxe. I invite you to join me as we uncover the art of lowriding here at AutoFest. I'm here with Sam, owner of this very special Deluxe, very original uh, 41 Chevy. Uh, Sam, uh, let us know what the car was like when you got it and the journey that it took to build it. Well, it's, it's, it's been a pretty challenging uh, 10 years. I've had, I've had it since uh, 2002, actually. Okay. Okay. And uh, we've uh, made a kind of a, a project thing with the family, with the boys and my brother and stuff. Awesome. And uh, put a lot of time and effort. So uh, what, what kind of condition was the car when you got it? We were very fortunate to find it in very good shape. Um, a very good foundation for us to build on it, which we did. Uh, many of the accessories were already on the vehicle. It is a California vehicle. Um, so once we, we got the car, then kind of put our, our, our minds together and with a lot of uh, internet searching for parts and stuff, we were able to put it back together. When you got the car, uh, what was the first thing you did? Did you strip it down, uh, catalog everything? Uh, what, what did you do? It, the first thing we did is actually we removed all the chrome. Okay. And we removed all the chrome, we sent it out, um, and we got it all, whatever was stainless steel, we had it you know, uh, stripped, nickeled, and then polished. Everything that was chrome, we re-chromed it. What did you do uh, after that? Well, after that, um, we, we started with the, with the body work. And um, again, very fortunate, you know, the, the body was pretty much intact. Uh, there, was, there was no cancer. We didn't have to cut any metal. Floorboards are still good. Well, the car being black, it's really straight. So you did a lot of blocking before you painted it? Yeah, we, um, we used a two-stage paint and then some uh, epoxy primer. Uh, by using that epoxy primer, it allows you to cut more of the primer until you can get into a smooth section. Um, once you do that, then you shoot the primer again and you can see if there's any kind of ripples and just go piece by piece by piece. So it is, it is, yeah, it is, uh, yeah, it's time consuming, but uh, you know, towards the end, it, it's, it's well worth it. Okay, so uh, you got the car painted. Uh, what was next on the agenda? Well, next was, was obviously the interior. And there's a gentleman in Whittier, California, his name is Mike Perez, AKA the blind man. Uh, he is the best when it comes to doing upholsteries for uh, early bombs. Um, he put an original Campton coach interior uh, with his original lining. Okay, so now the upholstery is done. Where, where do you go from there? Do you start looking for accessories or? Yeah, we did some accessories. Um, the car, the car came with some accessories. Visors actually in NOS visors, new, you know, old stock, and um, we painted it. You know, with a little bit of bending, we put it back into place because it's you know NOS. It's not like it just fits, you know, it's been sitting for 40 some years, but uh, we were able to get it in um, and we got the moldings uh, for the centerpiece, the banjo steering wheel, tissue dispenser, um, and um, we also did the wood grain. The, the wood grain was done by hand by a gentleman named of Oscar Hernandez. Now, uh, I noticed that you got things like custom, you got the skirts with the molding on the bottom. You were describing the, uh, the molding under the door here for the snow the boot scrapers and all? The most, most unique accessory that this vehicle has, it is the boot scrapers. Um, they're in very, very pristine condition. Um, the reason they're called boot scrapers and not running boards, because they actually have little holes on the metal where it allows the gentleman or, or even you know, the missus, where they'll be able to scratch off the snow off their boots, then it will melt down into the running board. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, I've probably seen maybe three of them so far in the last 10 years so that's awesome because that's the first set i've seen and yeah. i've been going to shows a long time <laughs> yeah, yeah everybody raises an eyebrow when they yeah. see it and uh the old school guys they know yeah, they but uh, we did that and then the shark tooth uh, hubcaps uh, we have the wraparounds front back bumper wraparounds what's unique on this vehicle as well there's a rear wiper the vehicle came actually with uh, 
two fog lamps. And what a lot of people don't know as well is they came with a passing light. The passing light's always on the driver's side. Uh, there was no high beams back in the day. There was only single bulb headlights. So in order to make a passing to a truck to get into the passing lane, you had to flicker the passing light. So that is also a, a very unique uh, accessory. So you only get, so that's why it looks kind of odd, you know, with three lights there, but that's the way it was in 41. Well, Sam, thank you for showing us your ride. My I appreciate pleasure. it. My pleasure. Sam and his ride are another great example of today's low rider. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show and I look forward to seeing you next time as we uncover the art of low riding. For over a year now, we have been submitting our shows to TV networks with no luck. They feel that low riding is not a big enough market for television. Help us show them how big the low riding community really is. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos with everyone you know, and like us on Facebook.